Oh know. my. It's even more volatile than water. Let's give it a shake. <clears throat> oh, look at that. The antifreeze. <laughs> oh, really? I can't even squeeze it. Try it if you don't believe me. While it's getting there, you want to go grab some lunch? Hey there, fellas. How's this for an experiment suggestion? Right here we've got some fluids of various types. Mostly of the technical variety. As for what we are looking to do, it's actually very simple. We've heard people asking how you carbonate water at home, and whether it's possible to carbonate gasoline. Why don't we find out in today's episode? We'll be using this device to do the carbonation. Without laying it out, I can tell you this is a MIG welder, which requires carbon dioxide to prevent oxygen from coming into contact with the weld while you're putting it down. Right here we've got some mineral water. In a rock-hard bottle. It also contains carbon dioxide, which is mixed with the water. So there's really nothing complicated to all of this. It hisses at you when you open it, the mineral water. Now, we're not particularly interested in carbonating water. This is a channel about cars, after all. Instead, we're going with motor oil, transmission, brake fluid, antifreeze, and, of course, gasoline. Now that I want to leave for dessert, since we don't even really know if it's possible to carbonate gasoline, or even motor oil for that matter. I mean, the water is easy. I mean, you can always just buy some pre-carbonated mineral water, right? But how you do it yourself with these fluids, well, there's only one way to find out. So let's do this. Fellas, I'd just like to say thank you for your support and for your kind words. I'm well now and everything's good. Now you yourselves take care and make sure to take all of the necessary precautions given the situation we're in. Now the latest addition to our online shop are these lovely face masks that'll help keep you safe from all sorts of nasty infections. Now at the moment it's August and the rainy autumn season is right around the corner, meaning it's time to buy some warm clothing. We're offering you guys these fantastic hoodies from our shop. And as of recently we've also got these awesome vests for sale. On top of that we've got a bunch of other stuff and we're always adding something new to the product line. For example, not too long ago we began to offer these nifty lighters and air fresheners. So go ahead and give our online shop a visit. Get yourself some G54 merch. And when using the code from the video description, you can buy some stuff at a good discount. So where do we start then? Well, we start by... making a bottle cap with a nozzle. So we'll fit this with a tire valve stem through which we'll be feeding in the carbon dioxide. So we drill through the cap, fit the valve stem and proceed to make a simple so-called... Yeah, the right name is carbonated water as opposed to mineral. Okay, let's see how well this goes, shall we? Lovely. Now we attach this to this. And we'll be doing very well. Fantastic, and with that we've prepared the cap. So we filled a bottle with water, now we take the cap. We've got the canisters, hoses, and all of that other jazz. How much have we got it set to? It'd be pretty hilarious if the bottle were to explode while I'm holding it. Let's give it a shake. Shaking it vigorously. It has gotten nice and hard. Now we can begin to slightly bring up the pressure, while I keep track of the process. Okay, now it's rock hard. Let me shake it some more. Now I doubt that this is going to take forever. If I remember correctly, it's a pretty quick procedure. Close off the valve. And let's try opening the bottle. Oh, look at the gas surging. It appears that we've made us some mineral water. 100%. You can see it bubbling. Which is quite nice. What do you think? What do those bubbles taste like? They get into your nose? 
<clears throat> oh, this is some first class stuff. So it turned out pretty good. Of course I meant to say that it's just carbonated and not mineral water. Since it was based on normal water from our cooler, which didn't contain any sort of minerals. Anyway, so the fact of the matter is that carbonating water is a pretty straightforward process. And now that we've figured out the water, it's time to try this with something else. Where's the cap at? Has anybody ever tried carbonating antifreeze? Well, we're about to. Now, in order to keep track of the pressure, we've installed this here reducer. The pressure gauges all work on this one. Let's open the valve and now... We proceed to carefully, incrementally, raise the pressure. Okay, so one line is one bar. We're already at two. I should definitely bring it up some more. That's three, and the bottle is still squishy. Or five, and it's rock hard at five bar. Fantastic. Or do we keep going? <laughs> no? And they're scared that it might explode. I mean, so what? What's the big deal? It's oily. Wash yourself off with water from the tap. Now, if the gasoline or the motor oil were to explode, that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, five bar should do it. We give it a little... We shake it and then... Well, let's open it up and see where that five bar got us. Oh wow, who screwed it on so tight? It detached in the wrong spot, but no worries. Let's carry on. And now... We see... Some bubbles. Which tells us what? That the gas has been dissolved. Look at that, we've carbonated the antifreeze. Let's see... If the gas begins to escape. It doesn't. No gas making it out into the bottle. But look at how it changed its color. We've got some fine bubbles in the coolant. Making it a sort of mott color. But the thing is that this is concentrated antifreeze. Which is... Something like jelly, I guess? I mean to say that it's pretty thick and high density. It's meant to be mixed in equal proportions with water. Okay, I suggest we go ahead and dilute it. Get it the right consistency for use in the cooling system. And, well, that's what we're gonna carbonate. Let's get to it. The bubbles are quicker to come to the surface, with the coolant being diluted. It's not as dense. Meaning the gases easily make their way up. Right, a bit of liquid made it into the hose. Not a problem. Whoa there! See the gases dissolving? Look at that! Them making it into the hose isn't ideal, but we'll have to deal with it. Need to get it off. Yeah, you open it just like you would a bottle of soda. It just keeps coming out. And after capping the bottle, here's what we see. We can see it bubbling. Meaning it is... Oh, it is rock hard. We've successfully carbonated this coolant. Which means what exactly? Well, let me open it and show you. Whoa, there! Yeah, we've made us some carbonated water containing antifreeze. Now let's pour all of this out and make an attempt at carbonating this nice bottle of brake fluid. Let's give it a shake in order to dissolve the gases. I can't really tell yet. Right. There we go. 
See that? Ease the pressure? Oh wow, you can carbonate it quite well. A bit had to have found its way back into the hose, but that's okay. Let's detach it. That's the amount that got into the hose. And now we can see the gases rising, turning into foam. Holy cow! It's even more volatile than water. The foam isn't disappearing. The pressure is bound to decrease. So look here. Brake fluid. And inside we see the dissolved gases that are trying to find their way out. Awesome. It's so nice and clear. Now what if we were to cap it and give it a shake? Fitting the cap? And let's see what happens. I can't even squeeze it. The gases are trying to escape. And look at what's happening. Wait for the foam to come down. It appears that... Brake fluid lends itself well to carbonation. Though I wouldn't recommend using this in a car. As you might imagine, the entire brake system will just be filled with gases. And who even knows how long it's gonna stay in there. Whether it's out quick or lingers for a bit. In our case it hasn't escaped yet, I can tell you that. Well, it's still bubbling at least. Let's shake it one more time. And the bottle is once again rock hard. Now I open it. Wow, they dissolved quite well in the brake fluid. And it's taking a while for them to escape. Then again, if you compare the viscosity to some of the other fluids, well, it has a bit more density than water, I do reckon. This is going very well. We've got some good carbonation going. Okay, so water, antifreeze, brake fluid. We've seen what happens there. And I am quite amazed by the brake fluid. Perhaps we will be just as amazed by one of these oils? Okay, let's continue in the same order we were going. We'll start with the so-called Dexron. Some nice transmission fluid. It's colored red. Let's see. It's nice and red. We might need to wait for a bit, of course, given that I do see a few bubbles. After all, the liquid was coming down from a certain height, so a bit of air did find its way into the bottle. I'm gonna carefully open it. We'll allow the gases to escape from inside the hose and the reducer. The pressure is gonna keep dropping and we will see what happens. Oh look, it is dissolving. I can see the fluid bubbling. Look at all of them bubbles. So apparently you can carbonate Dexron too. Those are the gases escaping. It might be the other gas it used to contain. I guess we need to... Remove this cap. Grab my regular cap that I had somewhere. Now I close it and start shaking. Well, I can't say that it's hard as a rock, but it has expanded. It has become... quite hard. Though I am able to squeeze it a tiny bit. And the fluid itself has become all muddy and mott. The bubbles are stuck with no way out. Why don't we go ahead and set them gases free? Here we go. It's hissing and foaming up. 
The liquid is trying to escape. Okay, fellas, now we have to wait for a bit. Or are the bubbles to make it out? But they're still... There they are. Wow, the foam is quick to form. It's very slow to disappear, though. The bubbles are barely even moving. You can clearly see them next to the plastic. They seem very stiff. While it's getting there, you want to go grab some lunch? Okay, now we try the motor oil. We've poured it into the bottle. All right, let's get to it. Shake it up. In order for the gases to dissolve. And the bubbles are quite large. When we were pouring this in, they were tiny. But now after shaking it, we see some huge-ass bubbles form. And they are slow to rise. There's the gas escaping. And the oil has begun to bubble. We've got a bunch of tiny bubbles in there now. The oil is bubbly. And now, just like we did before, we remove this, screw the normal cap on, shake it, and what do we see? The pressure doesn't seem to have gone up by that much, but it is noticeable. Though I have absolutely no trouble squeezing it, so there is some pressure. And now we see what happens when we release the pressure. Okay, the foam is trying to escape. As the bubbles are moving upwards, it's pretty much entirely foam. Which means that carbon dioxide is motor oil soluble. Now the interesting part. Let's try pouring some gasoline into the bottle for carbonation. Of course, we won't just be leaving it at that. If we are successful in carbonating the gasoline, what are we going to do then? We'll feed it into the carburetor and try starting the car. Feeding it some gas. Our gauge shows in megapascals. One of those equals 10 bar, meaning that O5 is equivalent to 5 bar. Let's shake this up. I can't really tell, to be honest. We had some tiny bubbles that quickly dissipated. And that's what it keeps doing. Look at how quick they are to disappear. They simply vanish. There you go. And so now... Let's see what... Let's switch this up a bit. Oh, for crying out loud. What the... You notice that too? I'm noticing something pretty strange. Can you see it? Why is that happening? We got bubbles appearing out of nowhere. Okay, I'm gonna grab the regular cap and screw it on. I wasn't able to see whether the gas is dissolved or not. What we did see were bubbles popping out of nowhere, 
and some kind of wavy action. Oh, really? I can't even squeeze it. Try it if you don't believe me. Here, you try squeezing it. Yeah, I thought so. It's as if we've still got the hose attached and it's creating 5 bar of pressure. Oh, look here. Nope, need to do it again. I blocked it with my hand. Same story. Look at them bubbles. Some mighty bubbles. They appear in weird places and are pretty huge. Holy cow. Isn't that something? Cool. It appears that gasoline is also good for dissolving carbon dioxide. Let's try that one more time. Well, it's holding its own. There are plenty of gases in there. It's taking a while for them to escape. One more time. Wow, how much gas did it take in? Such a small amount of gasoline. I take it the same as in water, but the bubbles are big for some reason. Like, really big. Can't say whether that's good or bad. Oh, I can't even squeeze it. It's barely even giving in. Okay, I'm seeing a decrease. Now, my theory is that if you carbonate gasoline and feed it into the combustion chamber, doesn't matter whether you're talking carburetor or fuel injection. You've got both air and carbon dioxide making its way in. Who's gonna win? I don't know. Will there even be combustion? That's what we'll be checking to see. So we'll carbonate this once again and try starting the car. Let's do this. Night, we've disconnected. The fuel pump won't be involved. Okay, let's start the car and allow whatever gas is left in the carburetor to burn out. And then we feed in the carbonated gasoline. Try again, please. Yeah, that'll do. Screw it on, flip it over. And now we fill the carburetor. There's actually plenty of pressure inside the bottle, wouldn't you know? No need to even squeeze it. Go for it. It works. Go for real. Look at that. The car is running on carbonated gasoline. What's up? Say what? Black smoke? I think I can set this down given it's under plenty of pressure. Here's where we're at with this, fellas. It's been running for a bit, and it's starting to get hard to breathe in here. Some gas, please. See that? The smell... is of incomplete combustion. Plus, you've got a faint hint of... carbon dioxide. You do kind of feel it. Now, prior to this, the car was running just fine. No smoke, no stink. So it appears that the carbon dioxide doesn't give you a clean burn. The air-fuel mixture can still be ignited, 
But some of it just flies out the tailpipe without even burning. Which is what all of this smoke is about. So that's the unburned fuel that's coming out. Honestly, it's starting to sting my eyes. The camera crew is frantically looking for some gas masks. Alright, we should move over to there. And there you have it, fellas. You saw it all for yourselves. Carbon dioxide appears to be a pretty peculiar gas. It can be dissolved in liquid and not just in water, but in various others such as gasoline, which can absorb quite a lot of it, incidentally. You would have seen it taking a very long time to escape. It just kept coming out with no end. Anyway, you saw it all for yourselves. Our experiment has been a 107% success. And that's it, you guys watch us, subscribe, suggestions, comments, give us a big thumbs up. All right, catch you later.